and just put those things before God. We know that God knows everything. Yes. But sometimes he wants to hear from us yes. and yes. see what our needs are. Yes. And our Reverend Stokes did such a wonderful job this morning when she talked Amen. about Amen. prayer Amen. and Amen. the importance Amen. of prayer. Amen. So we're going to ask that you come to the altar at this time. Wherever you are, you may say, I'm new. Can I come to the altar? Oh, yes. You're welcome to come to the altar. Put those things before the Lord that you may be needing. Ask God to bless you. Ask God to do those things that are not like Him. Because God is able. He's a wonderful God. And He's able to do whatever you might need at this very moment. He's your present help in the time of trouble. And Psalm 61 says it this way. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayers. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. That's right. And I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from my enemies. And I will abide in the tabernacle forever, and I will trust in the cover of your wings. For thou, O God, guess what? He has heard me during this morning. And you put those requests before the Lord. And you ask God for what you might be in need of. God hears those sound of prayers. God hears those prayers that come from your mouth. God hears the prayers that come from your heart. Everything that you speak to him, he knows. He's the all-seeing. He's the all-knowing God. And there's no care that's too small for him. I don't care what it is. God said, cast your cares upon me because I care. For you. He's a caring God. And He cares for everything that you're going through. Everything that your family is going through. Every circumstance that you may be facing right now. God cares. Every fear, every worry, every trial, every circumstance, every struggle. God says, I'm here. And I hear your prayers. And I'm attending unto those things that you put before me. Because I love you. He loves us things. He loves us people of God. He loves everything about you. And he wants the best for you. So we honor you with our praise. And we cast our cares on you this morning. Because we need you. We need you, Father. So bless us now. So bless us now. Father, our God, our day. Yes, we come. We come today to just bring those cares before the Lord. This morning, draw nine to you, and you go all the way.
for the opportunity to, to say a few words of encouragement and exhortation to this group, the students, the young, the old, and the in-between. Um, maybe there is something we do or say to today that will allow you to make another step on the path that we believe the Lord has placed for all of us. Thank you to my pastor, Pastor Cohort, uh, our minister, uh, Pastor Reverend Stubbs, and Reverend Fleming for allowing me to take just a few minutes to just speak with you briefly. I am Dr. Felicia Moss, and I am entering my 38th year in education. 38 years, and I'm just as fresh and ready as I have ever been. I can't remember the right now, but you all know it. Yeah. Yes. So, Forgive me, but I have been a part of education for at least 55 years. And the reason why I say that is because at the age of four, I was home with my mom. I wasn't yet old enough to go to Head Start or kindergarten. So I was home with my mom. Daycare didn't exist back there because it didn't exist and we couldn't afford it anyway. So as I was home and always getting into something and trying to figure out things, I was trying to outsmart people. My mom told me one day, if you can tell me what time it is, you can go to the store and get yourself an ice cream sandwich. Yeah. So being poor and not having treats that often, I was motivated. I looked at that clock and figured out what time it was, and I got it right. All right, All right? and I was able to go to Miss Barwick's store in the neighborhood to get myself an ice cream sandwich. That became, that began my journey of really understanding the power of education and the need for education for all people. When I started in a small town in Jasper, Florida, I knew nothing about education, but I knew that externally, there were things that happened when you did well in school. So I hung on to that for a while. But then I also began to see that there were interest in, intrinsic things that is inside of all of us that should motivate us to learn and to do better and to get more and more knowledge. It's important that we understand that the path of education has been spread, has been aligned with people, great people that have gone before us. And I don't take education for granted. It's just one of those things where it's just a, a no-nonsense type thing for me. It's been that way as a teacher, as an administrator, uh, as a, a district person, going into schools all over Florida and helping them to improve. I did that because I understand, I truly understand the value of education. I am so thrilled to see so many young people in the house today, and I know this is our Education Sunday, and we want to make sure that we are equipping our students as well as we can to go into the schools in this day and time. In the study of education and philosophy, we always come across this name, Horace Mann. Now, Horace Mann was a philosopher or, or a person of prominence, in the late 1800s, and he came up with the slogan that education is the great equalizer. Think about that in your head. Education is the great equalizer. So it was important that as education evolved, that systems were put in place so that we could make sure that all students were able to learn because we know that that determines our fate. Parents, I'm saying to you, and I cannot stress it enough, education should be, that in Christ, should be the most important thing in your, in your child's mind and in your mind from this day forward. And I'm sure most of you already have that because you do realize how important it is. But just think about the fact that power, there is power in knowledge. And as we look at some of the crises that we're under, that we're being put under today, and we don't lose hope and we don't lose focus. We're not going to focus on the politics or whatever, we're going to focus on kids and students. But remember that this is this education is not free, it comes with it comes
comes with the cost. It really does. We've seen in the legislature where we've had so many subjects pulled back from us. You can't do this. You can't teach that. There's no culturally responsive theory. There, there's no AP American history. There is no African American history. There is no, there is no. We've heard a lot of that. But believe me when I say to you that there is an opportunity for each of you here to make your own history. It is important for us as parents and as churches to educate our children. It is not only the responsibility of the public, private, or charter school sector Amen. to give our students everything that they, know, they need to know in order to be successful. As I was a young child in, in, in Jasper and I was going up through high school, I had no idea about college. No one had ever talked to me about college. No, I didn't know anyone had been to college. Um, I was blessed with a group of administrators from the University of Florida that came in this small town in the 10th grade and they pointed to me and said, we see something in her. We want to make sure that she's prepared to accept the Presidential Minority Scholarship when she graduates in 1980-something. So, uh, so I went and I had the opportunity to learn and grow, but it's just been just as I've been here. And I've met Pastor and Reverend Stokes and Reverend Stubbs and Reverend Fleming and Miss Deborah Hawkins and all the people of that prayer group were actually the people that paved the way for me to come into the University of Florida. You all had been there seven or eight years before I was there, and I didn't understand the importance of seeing people like us on campus. So I celebrate the fact today that I know that it is divine destination for me to be here. And I wanted to thank all of you that are part of the prayer group that really had an impact on what happened on the campus of the University of Florida. So let's give them a round of applause. You know who you are. opportunities for everyone to live to their full potential. Here at Abiding Faith, uh, we use an education initiative to try to reach out to parents and students. We have a lot of people in the, in the family here at Abiding Faith that are educators, that are doctors, that are psychologists, that are writers, that are musicians. We have everything we need right here in the house to make sure that our students get the well-rounded and the important education that they need. Amen. So draw on us. Students, go to school and be excited. How many of you all excited about going back to school this year? Say, yay! to continue their education or to add to their body of knowledge. So please, let's pull on the resources we have here. Uh, keep in touch with your school board members or your board members. Get an understanding of what's really happening in the school. And then if you have questions or concerns, any of you, please call us or reach out to us so that we can help you provide the opportunity that your child or your, your student or you may need in order to be successful and continue on to get that education because we know that education is power. And without, without power, we see things happening that are detrimental to all of us, no matter who you are, what ethnic group you belong to, how much money you have. It's important that we understand 
that knowledge is power. And without a vision, people perish. So if you're out there, uh, young people, you haven't thought about what you want to do in life, where you want to go to college, it's now time to do that. You can't wait until you're even in middle school anymore to decide what your path will be because you're going to be taking classes and being put into programs based on that, what you think you might do. So we want to encourage you today and we want to thank everyone here for the opportunity to see an example of what education can do. Not to say anything grandiose or whatever about myself, but to let you know that God has a way. He has a way of escape for you and that you need to lean and depend on him and your resources that you have available to you to really make the most out of what you have in education. Parents, do not be dismayed. Do not give up on your student or your education programs in Alachua County or any of the private or charter schools. There is a place for you, and I thank God that we are having parents take advantage of the various options so that they can make sure that their student receives what they need in their education. So thank you all. We're here. We're here to help. And we thank you students for being so enthusiastic about the journey that you all are taking. Thank you.
does great in school. He's a wonderful, obedient. Most of the time, I understand. Most of the time. <laughs> so, and he's a tolerant, because I've watched it, I've seen it in action. He is a tolerant brother. I have genuinely looked forward to, and that 
I believe, is because I see challenge, enjoyment, and most of all, opportunity in this school year, a new beginning. Allow me to share with all of you the story of Noah's Ark and God in Genesis chapter 6 through 8. God has seen the wickedness in humans and began to regret creating them. Genesis 6 verse 7 states, So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But there was an exception. Noah, a righteous man, was favored by God. God was to create a flood to wipe out all the humans and their race along with them, but Noah and his family would be given the chance to create a new world through God's instructions. Genesis 6, verses 17 through 19 state, I'm going to bring the floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. We are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. This instruction was just one of the many that was to keep Noah and his family alive and allow them to create a new world through God's image. Though Noah was not able to see the benefit of all the instructions given to him, Genesis 7 verse 5 states, And Noah did all the Lord commanded him. When the flood waters finally came to earth, Noah, at the age of 600, entered the ark along with the animals to escape the flood. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Verses 21 through 24 state, Every living thing that moved on the land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all, creature, all the creatures that swarm over the earth, and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals and the creatures that moved along the ground. And the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. The water flooded the earth for 150 days. Though after these 150 days of the flood, God remembered Noah and those on the ark and ceased the flood. Eventually, the ark stopped on a mountain and the water finally receded enough to see the summit. Every week, Noah began to send a dove out of the ark to see if the water had fully receded yet. The second, the second week, the dove brought back part of a plant, showing the water had fully receded from the earth. But the third week, it did not return. Genesis 8, verses 15 through 19 state, Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground, so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground, and all the birds, everything that moves on land, came out of the ark, one kind after another. An altar was then built by Noah, and he sacrificed some of the clean animals to God. After the Lord smelled the aroma, he said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all of you creatures as I have done. God had realized the entirety of what had happened on earth and swore it would never happen to the world again. The final verse of the story of Noah states this, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. The story of Noah is a great one from long ago. It may be an older story, but the reason I chose it for this sermon was because it had the main theme of a fresh start, a new beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like starting a new school year, you may have to start over with certain things and follow the instructions given to you by God or your parents to create better positions and opportunities for yourself as the year progresses. 
This is one of the key points the story holds in relation to a new school year. There are some others I would like to point out for everyone as well. Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 3 state, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy a long life on earth. In this story, Noah was obedient to God, even though God gave Noah instructions that he was not able to see the benefit of right then. This relates a lot to children and their parents. When your mom tells you to get off your device and do your homework, you may say, Mom, why do I have to do this homework if I'm not going to use it in the future? Noah was a perfect example that things God or your parents tell you will have a benefit in the future, even if that benefit is not there to your eyes yet. Another point from the story is that sometimes you may be required to start over, similar to Noah, when a new school year starts. If you got three C's and a B last year, you cannot do the same thing you did that year if you want to improve. You have to make changes to your study habit, your note taking, your attention in class, your schedule, how hard you work. God will help you along the way, but don't say to yourself, God will give me all A's this year. I don't have to work for it at all. God will assist you, but don't use him as a cheat to get things done. Allow me to say this again. Do not use God as a cheat to get things done. Amen. Obedience, which is compliant to an order. Creating opportunities, which are sets of circumstances that make it possible. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Especially circumstances that make it possible to do something. Starting anew, which is beginning in a new and typically more positive way. These are all contributing factors to a great school year and are just some of the things you can do to get the outcome of it into one you will be content with. School can be very enjoyable if you want it to be. It can also be horrible if you want it to be. It all depends on your attitude toward you. Allow me to close out in prayer. Lord, thank you for this beautiful day you have created. We know you are in all things at all times, Lord, and that you will be with these children of God at school during this new school year. I ask that you give them a new beginning this year. Allow them to start over like Noah had to. Help them to keep school at the top priority, but allow them to enjoy extracurriculars as well. Watch over everyone here today, and just keep them safe as they leave the house of the Lord. Please just make a great school year for everyone here, and allow them that new beginning. In your son's name I pray. Amen. 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 Let's give uh, Albert another round of applause. Praise God. New beginning, everybody. I may want this new beginning to, to be right. Amen. And we've got to make sure that we push forth the effort and what he said in our life. He said, you made the three C's and the B. You can't go on, okay, God, I'm going to make all the A's. You have to work, right? So we praise God and we thank God today for, for uh, that message, a new beginning for all of us, parents as well, a new beginning. And we pray now, we want to pray now for all of our young people, all of our students, um, elementary, middle school, high school, kindergarten, college, we want to pray for all of our students right now. And if you could come to the altar and all of the elders and the ministers in the house, Please join me here at the altar as we pray for our young people. Everyone, please stand. If your grandson, your granddaughter, your niece, your nephew may not be in church today, maybe they're in a different city or a different state, I want you to put them before the Lord even as we pray for the children. So make your way down to the altar, children. Thank you. 
the best for you. We want you to be successful. We want God to raise you up to be the leaders of this country, of the state, even in your family. Someone's going to have to lead. So all of you that are standing before me, I want you to think about, about um, Albert's message this morning, that fresh start. Then I want you to put inside of your head, so let this be your prayer, that this fresh start will start with a heart to achieve academically, that I will not slouch, that I will not spend all my time on those devices. Social media will not be my best friend. Amen. That I'll see myself achieving A's, the honor roll, B's. Amen. C's, that's mediocrity when you can do better. So all of the elders and ministers that are here, standing behind you, and we're going to lay hands and touch you as well. But I want you to bow your heads with me now. Um, children, young people, college students. What's your prayer today for yourself in school? What do you want to achieve? I want you to whisper your prayer before the Lord. What you want? What do you want? If there's something that you know you didn't do well in last year, then I want to improve. Put that before the Lord. Amen. And bow your heads. Elders and ministers, you can spread out among them and touch them. We praise you, Lord. We thank you today, O oh Lord. We thank you for the children, for the young people. We pray now, Lord, that you will touch each and every one of them. You've heard their prayers. You know their heart's desire. And you know, Lord, that the enemy doesn't want uh, the best for them. But we're now going to pray against whatever the devil has purposed against them. We bind everything that's not of you in the name of Jesus. We pray against every negative influencer. Anyone that comes to distract, anyone that comes to hinder, we pray, God, that you move all the distractions in the name of Jesus. As we put now, Lord, our children before you today, bless them, O oh God. Give them favor in the classroom. Give them favor with their professors and their teachers. Give them favor among their peers, O oh Lord. Bless them, O oh God, to stand up and be confident within themselves. I pray against anxiety when it comes to tests and, and, and papers, oh God. I, I pray against that and anxiety, oh Lord, and the fear of not being successful. Bless them, oh God, to overcome everything that comes to their mind that hinders now, Lord, or causes them to back away. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you right now. I know the parents and grandparents are in this house. And the little guardians are in this house, Lord. And I pray for them as well, Lord. I pray, God, that you keep them now, Lord, consistently praying and calling on you, God, to bless the children, to help the children, to, to increase those things that their students are in need of. So I pray for that support today, O oh Lord, that you will now, Lord, not let them get weary in well-doing. Give them now, Lord, the encouragement as well to be strong and confident as they pray for their children, their young people, the students today, oh Lord. We give you glory and we give you praise. I lift up all the educators today, oh Lord. I lift up all those that are principals today, Dr. Moss and, and John Green and all those administrators, oh God, even those that are watching today, Lord, I, I lift them all up today, oh God, and I pray, God, that you give them that wisdom and that knowledge as they guide and direct their schools. Bless them. Strengthen them today, oh Lord. 
and let everything go well. That their schools will God rise to that that grade that they need in this uh, state, Lord. The A school. I praise you and I bless you today, oh Lord. Thank you so much. Bless us now, Lord. As a church, a church that will always thrive through that prayer. As for God, if you raised us up now, Lord, raise up now, Lord, this church to continue praying and giving of themselves for the cause of Christ and for the people of God. We give you all the glory and we give you all of the praise. And we thank you today. We praise you right now in Jesus' name. And we're going to come through. Just keep praying. All of you keep praying. We want to touch you. Amen. And we most of all, most of all, we want to put a blessing upon you. All right? So if we come by and you feel somebody touch you on the shoulder, all right? Even on, on, on your forehead, you just claim what you need God to do for you. You claim what you want this school year. It's all about progress. And it's all about improving. Amen? you want to aspire to be, but I pray for them right now, especially for our college students that are going away. Lord, that you keep them focused in the name of Jesus. You see, the weight of the world is upon all of them, oh God, to, to do their best. And Lord, I pray that they will take advantage of every opportunity in the name of Jesus. I pray for those that are here today from UF, the, uh, the gymnastics team, the, the college and master teams from UF. I, I pray you bless them and I pray God that you continue to guide them that they will be successful. Oh Lord, that they will be successful in what they do, not only in the classroom, but in their their particular sport that they, they strive and work so hard to do and accomplish. I pray for them. And for all our athletes today, oh Lord, I pray you keep them free from uh, injuries and Anything now, Lord, that can come up while they compete, bless them. I pray in the name of Jesus to, to stay focused, mentally tough, to do their best. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you all of the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Clap those hands and give God some praise. Amen. All right? Success. All right? That's what we're looking for. Climbing.
running high. You can have your seats, dear people. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Now I'd like to, to welcome all of those that are watching as well as those that are visiting with us. If you can, if you can please stand. Those that are with us for the first time. Amen. We want to welcome you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Bless you, every one of you. And we're going to give you what we call an abiding faith welcome. Amen. <laughs> a chance now to, to give and to be a blessing. If you're watching virtually, just go to our website, www.abidingfaithcc.org and get the giving button tab. And give your time, give your offering, give your best. One thing I, uh, I do know for sure that when you give, God gives back to you. Amen. He multiplies the blessings uh, as he gives back to you. So I want you to see yourself instrumentally all right, uh, being instrumental in the things of God where you're working to make sure that you're always do, doing and giving your best. If you need an offering envelope, you can just raise your hand and one of the ushers will serve you. All those from Miami say yes. Those that are visiting from Miami, please say the ones, these are the ones that I know of, my brother Carlton Crawl. Let me see, if you all can stand, these are from Carlton Crawl's church in Miami. Amen. Praise God. Glad to have you today. Amen. Amen. Give them a round of applause. 